Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Brandon Bell. He's the Metcalf County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. We've actually had a good first cutting, good weather. A lot of hay has come up. Uh, a lot of hay has been made and you know some people were a little skeptical about how the hay crop was going to be early on but I think in general it's turned out pretty decent. Uh, maybe a little bit better than what some people may have expected. But one of those things when we're out making hay, one of the things that we probably need to be concerned about is the importance of the adequate and right moisture. Right. Um, you know, it, we've had some cases where we've had um, some, some dry spells here during the first cut where hay actually this year has gotten too dry, mm -hmm. uh, but that is a, a sort of a rare problem. Normally, we have to try to get hay down to the correct moisture level in order to preserve it where number one, where it will keep and it will maintain its nutritional value. And number two, where we won't have any risk of fire. So moisture uh, is, is definitely the key. And once we get it in that bale, it's too late to do anything about the moisture. So we need to make sure that the moisture is right going into the bale to prevent future problems. Um, and you know, a lot of us do uh, rolls, mm -hmm. but large squares have become increasingly popular over the past few years. And there's still people that do several small squares. So uh, if we're gonna be putting up a large package bale, we want to stay between 15 to 18% moisture if we can. Um, and we can, we can stretch that a little bit on small squares. We can go up um, to 20 to 25% moisture on the small squares. But we need to, to try to stay in those ranges. And if we stay in those ranges, um, it still is gonna go through uh, a heating process of some sort, but hopefully it's not gonna get up to a level where we will we'll start to lose nutritional content and where we will be in the danger of a fire. Absolutely, because you've done all this work to get this right. hay harvested and get it up. Now, are, are there general rules of practice about leaving it in the field versus going ahead and right away and stacking it in the well, barn? Well, a lot of people will go ahead and stack it in the barn, but it, you know it's risky if you do this. Uh, you, if you go ahead and stack it in the barn straight out of the field and don't let it sit outside and go through its heat, you really need to monitor it closely. Um, because we can think that we got it put up at the right moisture and we may have 95% of the field at the right moisture level, but we got to think about the shaded areas that were around the edges that have, might not have dried. So, you know, where it gets really dangerous is if we have got a wet spot in a roll of dry hay, that, that is really dangerous. So, you know, a lot, what a lot of people will do is they will leave it, um, outside until they think it's gone through the heat. But in doing that, a lot of times it's going to get rained on and then, you know, our quality is going to decrease by letting it sit out and take those rains. So a lot of people are going ahead and putting it in. And uh, sometimes people are putting it in single and not stacking it. That way it can get more air around it and then they can um, probe it, they can check it and get to all those bales unlike when you just go in there and start stacking it. You can't get to the center of that stack to monitor and you don't really know what's going on there. So sometimes early on where they've got plenty of room, they might single stack it in there. But either way, we need to monitor um, temperature. Uh, once it's in the package, it's, too, it's in the bale, it's too late to worry about moisture. But we need to start off, we need to think about the number 130. If it does not get above 130 degrees, we have no problems. We have no quality loss, no loss in nutritional value, and no danger of fire. Once we get up between 130 and 140, it could go up or it could go down. If we get to 150 degrees, it's more than likely gonna to continue to go up. We need to move it and get it where air can circulate. But we gotta be careful because once we get up to that 175 to 190, if we move that and air hits it, it can suddenly cause you know, fire to just explode. So if we have, if we get hay into that 175 to 190 range, we need to have the fire department sitting there on site. Once we're at 200 degrees, we've got fire present, we definitely need to call the fire department. All right, so there's a lot of monitoring to be done, even once we get that hay in the bale. But all right, Brandon, we'll certainly appreciate the information. If you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.